A couple weeks ago, NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal had some interesting comments as it related to Maverick star Kristaps Porzingis and basically the fact that he doesn't post up enough for Shaq's liking. Now, this was at the time in the seeding tournament where KP was averaging over 30 a game and basically 10 boards, shooting tremendous percentages, but it didn't sit well with Shaq that not enough of his game is based in that low post area. Now, it's a different era. KP has never been a physical presence down there. Hell, he's packed on about 20 pounds of muscle with the Mavericks that he never had with the Knicks. And even still, his frame is more lean. Now, it's extra lean now for the, for the playoffs compared to where it was in March when the season suspended. But nevertheless, we talked about those comments and how Shaq, to some extent, had a point, but at the same time was kind of viewing things through an outdated perspective based on where the game is now. Now, to his point, to be fair, the Mavericks have made a little bit more of an effort to incorporate some low post game for KP at times. Still not a lot, but at times here and there, because of his size advantage, his catch and turnaround shooting from the low post or from just a you know a couple feet further outside in the paint uh, works pretty well, as you would imagine, being a seven foot three shooter that can shoot like a small forward. Pretty good. But in this case, Shaq had a more curious reaction to Mavericks legend. I'm already gonna call him a legend. Mavericks playoff legend here. Luka Doncic knocking down a game winner, a 28-footer over Reggie Jackson to erase a 21-point deficit and beat the two-seeded Los Angeles Clippers in game four at the buzzer. Now, while the rest of the TNT crew seemed very amped up about this, just in disbelief at the incredible performance, whether you're talking about Ernie, whether you're talking about Chuck or Kenny Smith, they all rightly oohed and awed at Luca's performance, but Shaq had a surprisingly even kill reaction here. Let's check that out. 133, 132. As my man Luca. Mama, Mama up, Reggie. There goes that man. On Come on, man. Unbelievable. Reggie. Six wins the game Thank you. You can got him. Doncic goes 43. 17 boards, 13 assists. Ernie, can you repeat that again? 43, 17, and 13. Yes. Hey, the only guys in NBA playoff history with games of 40, 15, and 10 are Chuck and Oscar. What? Say that again. No, Say that again, no, Ernie. If you, if you missed it the first time, forget it. Well, Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> with at least 40 points, 15 rebounds, oh, and 10 assists. Underdog, you need to recheck that. <laughs> you didn't get the 10 dimes. You hey, huh? what, what an on. They, this team was down 21 playing without Kristaps Porzingis today. And they come back in the second. A 35-19 in the third quarter was huge. <laughs> but then they win it in overtime, 135-133. Right, you get back to the only two guys that would do that again. That would be you and Oscar at 40, 15, at least 40, 15, and 10 Ooh, championship shots. <laughs> hey, man, that was... You know, Shaq gets mad when we go crazy. No, I don't. No, I don't. I just said, calm, I just said, calm it down a notch. That's all I said. Why? 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 Look at that! Look at that game. No, no, he's great, but I've seen that before. Yeah, but we just saw it today. From Chuck and Oscar, huh? From Chuck and Oscar. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> hey, man, this is this is this dude was, without Pazingas. This guy, this is what you call willing your team to win. That was ridiculous, man. I love shot. You gotta love this kid, man. No, no, he listen. He's nice. He can play. No, he can't play. <laughs> he he can do Ben play Shaq. He great. Well, I, I I'd say this. Okay, but is he the top guard? The top guard as far as what? And that's the question. You well, know. listen, if you're going to... No, no, is he the top guard? Hold see, on. You, see, you, see, you're doing all that talking at all. Hold, hold on. Is he the top guard? I'm saying Steph, this. James or him? Steph, James, or him? Uh, Damon, uh, add that in there. I, 
He's I, getting there. I, I'm not. Thank he, you. He, so, he's, he's that's my there. point, Kenny. Um, but I'm just that's saying this. That's my point, Kenny. So if you ain't going to talk about stuff. You excited for a game like that. I just said take it down. I took it down a notch for you. That right, Because I was I was where he was. I took it down one notch. Listen. I, I did, but before. I was there. His name is Steph Curry. Yeah. I've seen that before. His name is James Harden. I've seen it all last week. His name is Damon Lillard. Just calm it down a little bit. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> hate him. So right. Shaq in this case basically wants everybody to, quote, calm it down because he says we've seen this before. Only as uh, Ernie points out, we really haven't. Like, two other guys have ever put up this kind of stat line. Oscar Robertson and Chuck right there on the panel with them. So what Shaq is trying to say is, is he the top guard? Is he the number one guard in the league? Is he necessarily better than Dame or Steph or even James Harden? The answer to those is no. Right now, no. But he's also only 21 years old. He's also changing the conversation. He pivoted away from what the entire point was. The entire point of their enamorment is that a word, enamorment? <laughs> I think I'm making up words here. The reason they were enamored with Luca's performance yesterday was because he posted a 43, what was it, 17 and 13 stat line? That's mind boggling. There has never been a playoff game like that. The only NBA game like that, I think they said ever, was Wilt. Like, and feel free to fact check me on that, but I, I read that somewhere. Um, as well, and if I can find the graphic, I'll throw it up on this video with it. But just crazy, crazy history made here. And the context is always lost on these people in this case. Like, in this case, Shaq, how you say, I've seen it before, I've seen game winners before, I've seen buzzer beaters before, I've seen incredible performances, therefore, tap the brakes on Luca. Don't be hyped about Luca. But it's just like the conversation we had previously where we were talking about Russell Westbrook and James Harden and the notion that, hey, you can't be too hyped up on Luka because they've dropped huge numbers as well. They've dropped 50-point triple-doubles. That was Jalen Rose. This is Shaq, but it's an equally bad argument here. Again, he pivots the conversation away from what Luka actually did in the rare company that he actually joined and instead focuses on just the outright best overall guard where you're talking about, one, a complete picture. Like, those guys, we're talking about 30-year-olds at this point. All three of the guys he mentioned are at least 30. And that's his conversation. Is Luka better than them right now? No, but he's 21. And he's not that damn far away. Also, he's doing things not only did they never do, not only did nobody really ever do, but elements of his game that they can do. James Harden can put up triple doubles as well. I'm not saying he's incapable. They're all capable of posting triple doubles. But this kind of performance, I think you would be very hard pressed to say that you just drop any of them in there and they're gonna go do exactly what Luka did. Now, Damian Lillard getting his team into the, into the playoffs, how he played through the entire bubble, yeah, he might've found it in a different way. But, you know, that's not to say that you need to take the shine off of this particular rose to, to make it seem like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be excited about this performance here for Luka because I've seen guys knock down buzzer beater shots before and play very well in the playoffs. Okay, but Luka is going against a top three defense, probably the best overall defense in the league just in terms of the talent they have. Top five in terms of how they performed in the regular season. They were... Expected by many to lose in four, like if not get swept, certainly lose, lose in five. So why then can't you give a little bit of credit and acknowledgement? Luca did that without Kristaps Porzingis. He did that without his second best player. Obviously, he's the best. So he did it without his main running mate. And rather than talk about that, rather than talk about how he came back from down 21 and how he led and willed this team back into this game, you instead have to just kind of like, whatever, bro. Whatever, bro. I've seen it before. He's Steph Curry. He's James Harden. He's Damian Lillard. I've seen it before, bro. I'm not going to get excited. Well, then maybe you shouldn't actually be talking about the game at all at that point, Shaq. Like, you're, you're great entertainment value, and there is no doubt you were the most dominant big man probably ever in NBA history. 
You are unquestionably great. But that's some lazy, weak, like, input to it. Like, for TNT, I can understand this halftime show and this team, they do phenomenal in terms of the ratings and all of that. But it is a little weird how the guys who are trying to hype up, they should be hyping up the product. Instead, Shaq just kind of casually just shits all over Luca's performance and like, whatever, I'm not even really that impressed. I've seen it before, just, just calm down, all right? There's no reason to get super hyped up about this. Even though we're coming back to this right after the game, you know, like moments after the game. No need to talk about it. No need to really linger on it too much. Dude, that's such a weak take. That is that is just a completely weak, weak take. Now, you could say, hey, uh, Donovan Mitchell had a, another 50-point game yesterday on the same court as Luka. So, there you go. Should we discredit what Luka did because Donovan Mitchell did what he did? No, that doesn't really make much sense. You can appreciate multiple players playing great. So even if in Shaq's argument, he's like, oh, I've seen it before. Fine. But it's impressive when Harden does it. It's impressive when Steph Curry does it. It's impressive when Damian Lillard does it. By the way, Steph and Lillard definitely don't have anybody trying to take any of the credit from them when they do something big. They do something big and Shaq and them all are basically, <laughs> all of them are wet britches over the entire thing. Harden, he's a little bit more of a mixed bag. There's there's a little bit of contentiousness to his game that people have a hard time with sometimes. But he still gets a ton of credit as being the greatest. And, you know, a lot of people will say this now. They'll call him the greatest one-on-one -on -one player ever. I think that's what Chuck says. The greatest one-on-one -on -one player scorer, I should say, in NBA history. That's quite the praise. So even Harden will get that, that distinction. But in this case... Luca gets people exploding on NBA Twitter, you know, NBA fans everywhere, popping out of their seats for one of the best playoff performances in recent years for a single guy. Certainly the best in Mavericks' recent history. And you just have to try and immediately undercut him just for the sake of being contrarian. Cool.